I'm Travis with CP Mobile RV Repair, and in this video, we're talking about RV inverter chargers, specifically this Victron 2000 watt multi plus inverter. And as a bonus, this is a brand new model from Victron, which we'll be doing some testing with in future videos. Victron is not a sponsor, I just like their products. Victron makes top of the line inverters, and with an optional Bluetooth dongle, we can monitor what this inverter is doing and change settings as needed. In our previous video, we covered standard RV electrical systems and single breaker inverters. This type of inverter and installation will power all of our circuit breakers and appliances. This installation takes place upstream of our power distribution panel, so the entire 120 volt system passes through it rather than just a single circuit. With this type of inverter charger setup, as we can see here, our entire 120 volt system passes through it. So whether we're plugged in to shore power at our house, a portable generator through here, or our built-in generator, our transfer switch selects our power source and goes out through the inverter and over to our power distribution panel. So this inverter replaces our battery charger in this setup, and it acts as a pass-through when we're plugged into shore power and it can manage our power usage, which we'll talk about later in this video. Now, if we turn the inverter on, as you can see, we're providing power to all of our circuits, even though we're not plugged into shore power or a generator. This inverter also now becomes our battery charger. So in this setup, we need to disable or remove our converter. For now, I'll simply unplug it. <clears throat> we don't want our inverter powering our converter, which creates a power loop and unnecessarily drains the batteries, puts an unnecessary load on the inverter. This setup requires a bit more attention as you use your RV. Since we are providing power to everything, you have the potential to quickly drain your batteries down when you are not plugged in if you don't manage your power usage. The big power users that we have to pay attention to in an RV are our fridge, our water heater, and our AC unit. This inverter is providing power to our fridge anytime the inverter is on, which means if you have a typical RV gas electric fridge and it is set to auto, it will switch to electric and run from our batteries through the inverter. Gas electric fridges are pretty inefficient on electric. I see them draw somewhere around three to 600 watts continuous. So this being a 2000 watt inverter can handle the load just fine, but it does drain the batteries down pretty quickly. This doesn't hurt anything with these lithium batteries, but it does need to be monitored so that you don't run out of power. For reference, a 600 watt continuous load would drain these two 100 amp hour batteries down to zero in about four hours. These fridges will run for quite a while on propane using minimal 12 volt battery power just for the controls on the fridge. To manage the power usage, we simply need to switch the fridge over to propane when we're off grid. Running the fridge on electric while off-grid is doable with a good-sized solar system and battery bank, but we will cover that more in-depth in future videos. Okay, for water heaters. The water heater, when run on electric, is a major power user. Most of them will pull around 1,500 watts continuous while they are heating. So again, this 2,000-watt inverter can handle the load, but our batteries would be dead in less than two hours. Since we're using lithium, it wouldn't hurt the batteries to do that but it is making both the inverter and the batteries work very hard for an extended period of time, and we don't want to run out of power that quickly. For off-grid use, we just want to make sure we use the water heater on propane rather than electric. Running a water heater off-grid on electric is possible with a very large solar setup and battery bank, but again, we will cover that more in depth in a future video. Now for air conditioning. It is possible to run an air conditioner from an inverter, but it takes a substantially larger battery bank and a larger inverter to do that. We want at least a 3000 watt inverter and soft starts on our AC units are highly recommended. I have seen this 2000 watt inverter start and run an air conditioner that had a soft start installed, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. It's working near its max and we need a bigger inverter to do it. I see air conditioners use somewhere around 1500 to 1800 watts continuous while they are cooling. So again, we would need a large battery bank to get any significant runtime, and ideally a very large solar setup as well to help replenish the battery bank as we're running. These MultiPlus inverters offer a ton of features, but for today, we will only cover the basics. We have an option with this inverter to set a shore power input current limit using the Victron Connect app. That means we can now tell the inverter how many amps at 120 volts we have available from the source we are plugged into. For example, this adapter is commonly used on RVs. This is a 30 amp 120 volt adapter to a 15 amp 120 volt adapter. 
This shore power inlet is meant for 30 amp service, but often when people are at home, they use a 15 amp adapter to plug into a standard household outlet on the outside of their house. In a standard RV electrical system with no inverter installed, there's no way to manage how much power the RV is using from the house, which can often result in a tripped breaker in our house. With this inverter, using the Bluetooth app Victron Connect or a remote display panel, we can now adjust the settings to tell the inverter that we are plugged into a 15 amp circuit. This allows the inverter to manage power usage in two ways. First, it can adjust the rate that we are charging the batteries, so it uses less power here and sends more power to our 120 volt power system. Second, it has a function called power assist, where if the total 120 volt power demand exceeds our 15 amp current limit that we have set, the inverter can use power from the batteries inverted to 120 volt along with power from our shore power source to meet the demand of our 120 volt power system. This is a very useful feature when you need it, but again, it requires monitoring of power usage to, and accurately setting the current limit to avoid an unwanted power assist situation. Here's an example of an unwanted power assist situation. Let's say with this system as it is, we are plugged into the correct 30 amp RV 120 volt outlet at an RV park, and we have our air conditioner running and we have our water heater running on electric. Both use a lot of power, but we forgot to change the input current limit to 30 amps, which is what we're plugged into. We left it set at 15 amps from when we were at our house. With both the water heater on electric and the air conditioner running, we would be exceeding 15 amps of power usage. So the inverter will now go to power assist mode and we'll start pulling power from our batteries to keep up with the 120 volt demand rather than charging them, even though we have 30 amps available, which is plenty to run both of those appliances from our RV park. To avoid that situation, we simply need to adjust the settings to 30, in which case the inverter will now go to charge mode and it will be charging our batteries rather than discharging them in this same scenario. Other smaller appliances, such as a microwave or a coffee maker, use a lot of power, maybe 15 to 1800 watts, but they run for a very short amount of time. So there's not much risk to accidentally running our batteries down without realizing it's happening. Smaller appliances like TVs, laptops, and cell phone chargers use a very small amount of power, so we can run those for a very long time, even with a fairly small battery bank like this one. That's all for this video. There will be links below for these batteries and this inverter if you would like to purchase them. And we will be doing more videos where we cover in detail how this inverter works, how to adjust our shore power input current limit, and how to read the information provided from the Bluetooth app. We will also be testing this using different appliances that we'll plug right into our board and see how the batteries handle the load, how the inverter handles the load, and get an idea of how much runtime with different appliances. If you'd like to see any of those different scenarios, let us know in the comments below. Please hit subscribe and thanks for watching.